at Paisley. It's a 1960 Euro Beetle. And this car was um, built for our charity Beetle promotion. And this car was probably one of the worst that we've ever tried to restore. We call it more of a resurrection than a restoration because we very rarely put anything back to stock. This particular build was 1200 hours in total and that was done over 105 days. So the first step really is the design phase and that's all me. I usually sit down and decide exactly how I want the car to look, what size engine's going in it, all that sort of thing. And then I work with a, an artist to create a rendering so we have a visual of exactly what the car's going to look like once it's done. Once we have a clear idea of what we're going to do with the car, first it goes to blast so we can get a really good idea of how much metal work needs to be done. We normally strip the car down to bare, to just a bare shell of a car, no wiring harness, no glass, no anything like that. And then we have a person come in and media blast it. Usually it's walnut shell or some kind of plastic media to take all the paint and body filler out of the car and get us back down to bare metal. And then from that point, we put it in a sealer, which seals the metal, keeps it from rusting. Once it comes back from blast, we make a sort of a full list of the amount of metal work that needs to be done. So any replacement panels that we need to purchase to um, go into metal work. We're cutting out the old rusted sheet metal, and then we're welding in either replacement panels or panels that we've made ourselves here. What we're trying to do is make it as flat as possible, make the curves as smooth as possible. We use a sanding blocks. Um, we use a couple different ones. We use a Dura block, which is a brand that we use, and Big Kids blocks. We use some of those, and they're perfectly flat, perfectly straight, and that gives you all the nice curved lines and everything. Paint process can be pretty lengthy depending on you know, how many colors you have and that kind of stuff. But um, we have uh, we mix it according to what the manufacturer uses. Normally, it's four parts paint to one part of a hardener, and then one part of a reducer to kind of thin it out so you can spray it. And we usually spray two to three coats of the base color on it, and you let it dry between coats. Normally, it's 15 to 30 minutes between coats, and then once you do that, then you start applying your clear coat. The exterior color is a Volkswagen blue, which is actually an original Volkswagen color but it didn't come in until like 66, 67. And we've just put it over a black base, so it looks a little bit darker than most people would recognize the color. After it's painted, we usually do all of our wiring and that sort of stuff. And then we'll go into assembly, putting in all of the lights and, you know, fenders, running boards, everything else goes on. The interior process is more of an evolving process as I do it. So I have a basic idea of what I want to achieve. There's a lot of time that's spent like finding the correct material so that everything is cohesive. Everything in our builds interior wise is full custom. So I will pattern everything out and um, construct everything from scratch. So no two cars that I do interior wise are the same. Door panels are actually probably my favorite part of the interior because they're very easy. Um, there's not a whole lot of sewing involved in them. So it's basically just cutting a panel to make, to fit the door and then covering it. The ones that went into Paisley had a very cool little pocket design on them, which I hadn't done before. So there was a bit of, uh, bit of a process trying to work out how to engineer that. This steering wheel is actually really basic. It was a half wrap steering wheel. So the outside, the front part just comes off and we can just wrap the front in leather. The center for this steering wheel, we actually sent out to have engraved. We sent that off to a man in Washington state and he hand engraved all of those details for us. Headliners probably always say it's my least favorite part, but when I'm actually doing it, I find it quite enjoyable. <laughs> It's really just a matter of getting in there and starting to glue the, the leather into place and then, you know, meticulously wrapping and undoing it when it's not right and, you know, stretching it to make sure that there are no wrinkles in it. The embossed leather was done at the tannery and then we just wanted to carry that through. So it seemed like a good idea to get the engraving done. 
And then we also have the Paisley design on the side of the car, which is like a vinyl wrap in the trim line. So that sort of flows through from the exterior to the interior and also into the engine bay. Probably the one thing that most people will sort of say stands out most about what we do is the amount of attention to detail that we put into them. So with the charity builds, all of the uh, money that we raise helps to keep kids in school. We have an, an orphanage in Indonesia. We send 182 kids to school this year. And all of the funds that we raise from our charity builds goes to that education fund. It went to a gentleman in North Georgia. He's already drove it, you know, a bunch and taking it to its first show and it won three different trophies and it won Promoter's Choice and all that kind of stuff. So. So he's pretty excited about it. You know, when it's all done, I like driving. So that's that's the best part for me. I enjoy taking something that somebody would have crushed or thrown away. And then we built it into something that's, you know, back on the road again and everybody can enjoy it and appreciate it.